the regular day-to-day life that are seeing our youth and are trying to figure out a way that they can relate to our youth. Because I think sometimes we get too intimidated to even deal with our youth and everything. So what advice would you give to folks that realize the skill and talents of our youth but don't know how to reach them? I mean, you've done such a good job, and, of course, you have your background that helps you. But just for the average Joe, what advice would you give them to if they want to reach out to our youth? First and foremost, get rid of the fear and replace it with love. You can't you can't change anything with fear. It takes love. And so that love is going to allow you to understand who it is that you're approaching and learn their language. Once you learn their language, you can you can trade with them. And that's why I say I use the example of pigeons, which are P-I-D-G-I-Ns. They were languages that were developed so people can trade with each other. The only thing that you can trade with the youth nowadays is encouragement and empowerment to make them feel they're understood. And the only way you're going to do that is find a language to communicate with them. And even if it's a pigeon that you have to create with them to trade encouragement and empowerment for their uh, uh, trade it for or, or their outcome of leadership, then that's what you've got to do. So you've got to get rid of the fear, replace it with love, and then get ready to understand and not misunderstand. Because once you misunderstand based on, on, on your perceptions of who they are or your mis, you know what I'm saying, uh, just, just the fact that you – you haven't even been given the opportunity to understand the culture from which they come. You got to be able to go in there, remove the fear, replace it with love, and then understand. Once you understand, yeah. and, and, and one of the things I'm guilty of, I talk a lot. I talk too much sometimes. But when I get around them youth, I listen to youth more than I listen to adults. But maybe I should listen to both. But me, I talk too much with adults sometimes that. I ain't got no talk left in me when I get around the youth, and it's better for me to listen to them, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, I, I, I like to hear what's on their hearts. I like to hear what's on their mind. And, you know, I I have a big uh, I have a big flaw. I, one of my flaws is that sometimes I don't want to hear what you got to say because I think I know what you're going to say. I can't do that with the youth because – you have no idea what they're about to say because you have no idea what they're going through and how they get ready to express themselves. And the best thing to do is let them express themselves. Once you figure it out, create that pigeon, create that trade language so that you, you can start trading empowerment and encouragement with them in, re, in, in hopes of making sure that it results in leadership quality. Oh, yeah. Because one of the things that I'm going to be, you know, open up, uh, Relationships and everything, and everything is that one of the things that we've been talking about on this show before is that uh, I meant to mention this earlier in the show is Dean's actually worked on the other side, meaning he's done the whole guard thing and everything. And he even has talked about the fact that he has to give respect to those that are in the system, otherwise, there's not going to be any real communication. Am I saying that correctly, Dean? That is absolutely Dean? correct, brother. Brother Dean, how you doing, man? I'm good, bro, and congratulations for 10 years home. Thank you. That's that's Friday, man. I can't wait to celebrate it with myself or whatever I got to do in my head to say I feel accomplished behind <laughs> that. You know what I mean? No doubt. No doubt. And that's to be commended and celebrated because, as we both know, it is difficult for brothers to come home and stay home. You know, it's it's even it's, it's, a, it's a challenge, especially when you still know your people in the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you still know yeah. them and they know you, and 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 sometimes when those financial pressures hit you, and you know you can go out there and get that brick, you know you can go out there and push that bundle and and get that money as quick as possible. When you refuse to mm-hmm. do it, then then that's an accomplishment. Indeed it is. And I was saying earlier before you got on, you know, before you had called in, it's that the change, a lot of times people in the community say, well, to the Department of Corrections nationwide, you know, and they say, what are you doing to change their behavior? Uh, We can't do anything to change the behavior until they're ready to change the behavior, but we do need your help. You know, once a, a, a man or woman is released from incarceration, then all the programs and everything that they've taken, gotten the education and whatnot, it becomes another uphill climb because now the community is like, oh, you've been in prison. All right. <laughs> but how many of your family members have been in jail? 
how many of your family members are actually sitting in there? Um, and that's not the doorbell. Uh, we got ten minutes left, but I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, you know, how many how many people do you know that made mistakes, and now they pay for that? They don't they don't come home for punishment part two. You know, they they want to do things to better themselves, and yes, it does become frustrating. I've heard it from guys who left out and ended up coming back. Like, there are no opportunities there except for the one that I left. So yeah. why not go yeah. and get, you know, I got three kids to support, and, and my girlfriend, uh, you know, she's bugging me to pay this and pay that. And I tell the guys, I said, you know what, you got to start being selfish for yourself because if it's another adult sitting there waiting for you to take care of them, you got to kick them to the curb. It's going to hurt. But before you put them on your shoulders, make sure you set your shoulders back so that you can keep your head up. People are going to tell you no. People are going to give you a hard time. But if you made it behind this wall, you can make it anywhere. It's not going to be easy at all. But you got to keep pushing and you got to keep going. That same job where you were washing dishes for a dollar and some change a day, should nothing stop you from taking anything to start. That means you got to stay there, you know, as you start to make connections with people and use your talents because there's a whole lot of talent. People don't realize it's a whole lot of talent that's waiting to come home, and they need the opportunity. They need the encouragement, and they need all of those things where we can't do it inside. You you know, you ain't calling back to the prison like, dog, let me holler at you, you know. But exactly. it's so many. There's so many people out here that can assist, and until they figure that part out, once they figure that part out, it'll be that much better. That's just my opinion. Just, um, yeah, Mike, you know, back, done, like that. Is that something you? Is that something you really found that you faced a lot? Because I'm imagining you did that. So many, because that's the stereotype. Is that so many times you can't find a job when you get out of the system? I know it was ten years ago, and you, of course, made your living as being the great artist that you are, and I have great respect for all that you've done in terms of your poetry, you know, I've seen your acting, and you're one of the, as far as I'm concerned, you're one of the top actors in our area. Um, and there's oh, quite I appreciate a few actors that, here, man. I always tell people, I feel like I can't really act. I just act a fool sometimes. But uh, I, uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I will say this, man, I will say this. I was fortunate to be remembered for my loyalty when I came home because I was a loyal dude in the streets before I went in. And when I came home, one of my partners had what I call uh, not even close to flourishing restaurant, um, and it was called Blue Mountain Catering. And yeah. it it wasn't really doing anything. Like it, we was we was probably we was probably averaging about five to six people a day coming in that restaurant for a whole day. So. I said, okay, I'll do this by day, by night. I'll be that entertainer. I'll do what I can do. I'll stay on parole for five years. I'll, 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 if, 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 I'll start reaching out to churches. I started hitting churches up online saying, hey, I just came home from prison. I'm into speaking to the youth. Can you invite me to your church? I don't charge a lot. All I need is my travel pay. I, one thing that I remember hearing, Jay-Z, he said, I'm not just a businessman. I'm a business." Man, so my my my, the, my my whole theory about making sure that you become a business entity yourself, that you a walking business, was what I took to it. And so when I came home to that restaurant and I got behind my boy Damian Moore, and I told and he told me about the vision, we started like sparking the rocks and creating the vision together. And then you know everybody came together and and and, and he wanted to change that restaurant into something great. It flipped it around mm-hmm. and turned it into Dave's Chicken and Waffles. And oh. I made sure that my personality behind Dave's Chicken and Waffles was part of the ingredients outside of the food that was being served. And so nice. as an entertainer, when people came in and they came to get something to eat, they also got some laughing and some smiling and some jokes from me. So it wasn't, <laughs> you know, it was, yeah, it was about good entertainment with food, and then you got some good music playing. Then you got a brother smiling at you. Then you got other brothers smiling at you. I made sure that even when brothers was coming home, they had jobs over there. And that place turned into one of the most awesome restaurants in the world, not just because of the food, but because of the personality and entertainment that came with the food. And so, right. 
as, as, as I realize that a lot of brothers ain't going to be able to come home and do this. A lot of brothers ain't going to come home and be able to step up into a job like this. So when brothers did mm-hmm. come home, I made sure, look, you can fill out the application. Don't be playing. If you fill out the application, you need help with it, let me know. Don't lie. Don't, you know, because I might not be the one interviewing you. Be honest. Right. It might be the owners interviewing you. Be honest. Just be honest and tell them what's going on and let them know that you need a second chance. And a lot of times guys don't come home with a second chance, and they're self-defeated. Like the guys that you was talking about that was going back in, I, when I was on the mm-hmm. inside, those are the guys that I pulled to the side. I was like, yo, man, what's up, man? What'd you do wrong? And they'll tell me. I'm like, okay, I ain't right. doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and right. it could be something stuff I knew as I didn't go out five days every day looking for a job. I only went out two days a week, and the other three days I tried to party. So when they told me stuff like that, I said, you know what? I'm going to go out seven days a week looking for a job, or I'm going to go out. I ain't going to party any day of the week. If I party, it's going to be through my gifts and my talents, whether it's poetry or whatever. I'm going to go to a slam. I'm going to speak. I'm going to spit. I'm going to do this because when I write my book, I got a whole audience right here that know my story already, and they're waiting for a book. So that's sales right there. So I was building my mm-hmm. life everywhere I went, everywhere I went, right. even when I was coming out on passes. I didn't do crazy. I didn't want to go to the movies and all that other stuff. If I wanted to watch something, I would either go to Baba Chuck house or Hanif's house or whatever and watch something on the Internet. Now, you know, hey, you know, a brother is a man, so, you know, there was, <laughs> there was some female companionships around here and there, especially with, especially with African-American dance ensemble and Chuck Davis. You know, that whole little Understood. organization was filled with sisters, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> So, you know, there was some <laughs> entertainment in that area, but a man gonna be a man. But anyway, you know, uh you know, nothing nothing that the nothing out of the ordinary, you know, just like some 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 talking here and there and all that, but making sure that my <laughs> my my attention came from, you know, those beautiful sisters. Anyway, um and one of the things I remember, man, is that I told myself a career is everything that you make it before it comes to career. And that's what I mm-hmm. did, man. And to this very day, you know, I, I kind of, like, deviated away from the restaurant. I was like, yo, you good, bro? You straight? Yeah, I'm a mystery. But I was like, yo, I got to go make this dream come true. And that's what Gotta I did. I to be, I, yeah, yeah, once I was on five, once I got off parole, that five-year parole mark, I went and got my passport. I went and got my voting rights back. And I yes, jumped head first. Dead into the into the in, into the film industry. Oh yeah, you're doing a great job. And Michael, just really quickly, well, two things. One, um, I'm glad that you were able to get us a call in at the eight o'clock hour. But I definitely have to have you back again in the near future. You've got so many stories to tell. We definitely want to get you to spit some words and everything. But we're about ready to wrap up this particular edition of the show. But we definitely want you back again. I'm sure the dean would say the same thing. But for those that are listening now, I want to know of the website that they can find out where to get your book and stuff of that nature. Is there a set website that you would say is your go-to website? Well, for my book, you can go to Amazon. Uh, it's a bestseller on Amazon. It's called A Polished Soul, The Mike Ray Anderson Story. Again, A Polished Soul, The Mike Ray Anderson Story. But what I would encourage people to do is either go to Facebook and look up Mike Anderson, the actor, or follow me on Instagram at actor. Mike Ray, that's A-C-T-O-R-M-I-K-E-R-A-E, uh, actor Mike Ray, or go to my Mike Anderson, the actor page on um, Facebook and like it and message me. I, 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 I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I'm very accessible. I'm very approachable. I, there's nothing in my head that tells me that I'm above anybody. If anything, I'm going to try to get beneath you to lift you up, you know what I'm saying? Well, we appreciate mm-hmm. you, and we definitely appreciate you being on this show with us. And like I tell many people, I told Dale the same thing last week. I've told even Mayor Steve and some of our other guests from around the country. We uh, Once you get on the show, we consider you part of the regular family. So anybody that you're free, if you want to call in, if you just want to listen, or if you hear something that you want to comment on, we're open to having conversations here every Monday between 7 and 9. We are going to take a couple of weeks off in June because Dean's going to run away. I might decide to put on some reruns so because I don't know being live. All right, y'all have a great night. I appreciate the opportunity. 
Indeed, I appreciate you, Mike. Indeed.